Hey, what's up, Crypto Army? I'm Travis, your Crypto Newbie, bringing you my experiences so you have to learn things the hard way. So you guys asked, and I'm going to deliver. I got a lot of questions and comments asking for, hey, can you cover some more pre-sales? Because I haven't done a lot of pre-sale videos recently, so we've got a pre-sale. And Ape Clock goes live tomorrow, April 24th, at 12 p.m. UTC. So you've got a little bit of time between today and tomorrow to do some research into this project. And before we jump too far into this, I do want to give a quick shout out to the team for sponsoring this. It's awesome. I've been talking with them about their project and trying to get some insights into it because I like a lot of the aspects of this project. It's got some unique utilities and some unique qualities I think you're going to like. As always, all the comments on my videos are my own. They're my own opinions, my own thoughts about the project. But as always, do your own research. There's a lot of risk that goes into pre-sales. If you've been watching projects launch, you can see there are a lot of things that can go wrong when you do a launch. Whether it's other tokens attacking through a DDoS attack or bot attacks or contract attacks, a lot can go wrong on a launch. So always do your own research and never invest more than you're willing to lose. All right, so let's take a look at their website. As you can see, you buy it on Pixel, April 24th, tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this, 12 p.m. UTC. And if you click on the link, it'll take you over to Pixel so you can buy it directly there. That's always the safest way to get to these things. All the links that I mentioned on this video and show you are going to be in the description of this video. That's also a very good way to find this stuff. A lot of this information from the website is also on their white paper, so you can take a look at either one depending on how you want to look at it. They've got essentially a PDF document that you can take a look at. It's about 10 pages long. We're not going to look at the white paper for this. It looks phenomenal. They did a really good job, but it's a lot of the exact same information that's here on the website. And as you can see, it is a Binance Smart Chain. So you're on the BSC side, BEP20. So you're not going to have those high fees that you would have on the Ethereum network. Get rewards every minute. Now that is a really fast rebasing plan. Every single minute. 1,440 times a day. And that's how you can get to this APY, which is higher than some other projects out there. It's actually significantly higher than the original rebase tokens out there like Titano or Seifu. Now this is a Seifu fork also, so just keep that in mind. As a fork, it has a lot of benefits of being able to fix a lot of the issues that Seifu had in their contract and make sure that this is a more stable, more reliable contract than even what Seifu has. Here's a pretty cool part. Earn 1% on all your referrals. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in the future. I'm always a huge fan of putting this address right here on the website. So if you're looking at this and this is something you're considering doing, copy this right here, go to your wallet, trust wallet, MetaMask, wherever, import this contract address. That way after your purchase, whether it's on pre-sale or after it launches, it's gonna show up in your wallet right away. It's a very convenient, very easy way to do this. And a lot of times websites get attacked on launch, so you might not be able to get access to this as easily later as you can right now. DDoS attacks are pretty common on launches as is creating duplicate tokens so that people buy the wrong token, which is why you do a DDoS. If you know the contract address is here and you do DDoS, you could potentially get people to buy your duplicate token, which is just a scam, and scam them out of their money. So it's always good if you're planning on getting this, to get this copy address right away, don't wait for launch day, because as soon as a DDoS attack happens and if that's successful and you can't access this website, it can cause a lot of issues with making sure that you buy the right contract. But let's keep going down. I really like the design of their website. Some of this information is carried on down below, so we're just going to talk about it when we get to it. So a 987,000% APY. What does that translate to? It translates to a lot of money. If you invest $1,000, it turns into like $9.8 million 365 days later. Pretty phenomenal APY, right? <laughs> it's crazy. That's a lot of money. Now, you're going to say, well, that's impossible. It'll never happen. The reality is most people will never achieve that because they're going to pull out beforehand. If you invested $1,000 and all of a sudden it was worth $100,000, how much would you pull out? If it was worth a $1 million, how much would you pull out? Most people rely on this as residual income or passive income, whatever you want to call it. They let it grow and then they start taking out periodic withdrawals. Maybe they pull out what they invested. So maybe you invest $1,000, you let it build. And generally speaking, every 20 to 30 days, the token is going to double in value just because of the rebases. You're going to get so many rebases that whatever you invested is going to double, assuming that the price stays the same. If the price goes up, it goes up even higher. But 
about every 20 to 30 days is going to double at this APY. So $1,000 invested on launch day turns into $2,000 on 30 days later. Let's just say as a, as a roundabout estimate. 30 days from now, you pull out $1,000. You've now recovered your entire initial investment. So everything that you're playing with is just like funny money. It's not as important because you already got your original investment out. So you're letting all of your rewards accumulate over the next, you know, the rest of the year. Maybe it gets to a million, maybe it gets to a hundred thousand dollars and you decide, Hey, a hundred thousand dollars is giving me X dollars every single day. Maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's 2000, whatever it is. I can pull out just less of whatever I'm getting a thousand. If it's giving me 1200 or 2000 and I can continue to grow but I can pull out $1,000 today, $1,000 tomorrow, and you do that. So you never really get to a million because you're taking advantage of the rebase to pull out the money. You're letting it accumulate and pulling out some money. That's what a lot of people do with rebase tokens is they come up with a plan on, okay, I don't necessarily need 9 million. That would be nice, but it might not get there. Any number of things can happen, right? So you come up with a plan of pulling out some money just so you can realize some gains while you're allowing this thing to continue to gain pretty cool stuff for rebase tokens. I'm sure if you've never heard of them, you're probably pretty interested right now. If you're curious how this works, it's the power of compounding interest. And you can Google this. This is a Google thing that you can pull out there. Double a penny every single day for 30 days, or I give you a million dollars today. Which one do you take? The right answer is you wait 30 days and get $5 million. Five million is better than a million, especially if it's guaranteed. Now, these aren't guaranteed. There's never any guarantees in crypto, but compounding interest is a guarantee. It always works like that. Now, it's not doubling. Doubling is the difference, right? So doubling is a 100% return on your investment every single day, and then it continues to compound. So one turns to two, two turns to four, and on and on and on. Next thing you know, it's $5 million. That's how compounding works. That's the power of it. Rebase tokens are phenomenal. They're awesome. And as you can see, 1% on all your referrals. Now, it remains to be seen how many people do you know? Can you get something go viral to get a whole bunch of people looking at this and investing in it? Who knows? But if you can, and you can generate that referrals, that also translates to volume, which means that the protocol does well because you're trying to get those 1% returns on people investing. So this really does perpetuate the token moving forward. It's a phenomenal approach to building volume. So I hope you can see the benefit of having this on launch. That's pretty amazing. NFTs, and as you can see, they've already got NFTs built. Now, NFTs were huge at the end of last year, and there's no indicators that it's not gonna be just as big for this year moving forward. So. Almost every project is doing NFTs and I like it. There's not a lot of information other than the pictures. Obviously you can see the different designs, but just about every project these days is doing some sort of an NFT release. Again, there's not a lot of information about exactly what they're doing, but you can already see them. They've got NFTs built. Now, are the NFTs going to do anything for you? Is it going to be some sort of utility? Is there going to be any kind of benefit that you get from this other than just owning an NFT? The NFTs that you buy usually contribute to the ecosystem in some way, whether it's going into the burn pit or if it's going into the marketing or treasury, it usually does benefit you to buy the NFTs. And I got to tell you, I like them. I think they look pretty good. Now, I'm not a huge NFT person. I generally don't buy NFTs. I've got a handful, but most of those give me specific utility inside of the ecosystem. And that's why I bought them. So how do rebase tokens work? If you're not familiar with them, you buy them. You don't have to stake it. Staking is automatically done. You just hold it and you'll start getting rebases every single minute. So if you open up the app, there'll be some sort of a countdown timer probably in there that is gonna show you when the next rebase is. And every single minute, you're gonna get a rebase. You're gonna get a certain amount of tokens for the amount of tokens that you currently own. There's a reason right now that you're seeing a lot of rebase tokens getting launched because people love rebase tokens. They're super simple. You don't have to go stake it. You don't have to go add it to a liquidity pool to get the returns. All you have to do is hold it, not sell. So as we said, it's auto compounding. So just like that penny that doubles every single day and turns into millions of dollars over the course of the month, this one's going to have a 0.02604% rebase rate. Seems small, but that adds up to around 2.5% per day. So you're getting a 2.5-ish percent increase 
every single day that translates into that huge amount at the end of the year. So what is this insurance fund? Well, the insurance fund basically guards against sales. So the insurance fund builds up every single transaction, puts a little bit of money into the insurance fund. When people, like I would give the example of if it gets to $100,000, maybe we're making $1,000 a day, so you're gonna sell a little bit. Most people do that. Most people sell a little bit to realize some of their gains. The insurance fund counteracts that. So when we start seeing some sales, they throw the insurance fund out there to stabilize the price. I know, it's pretty cool, right? And it keeps the holders safe. So like I said, avoid flash crash through price stability. A lot of times you'll see a whale sell. Whale sells off, everybody gets spooked. Everybody gets scared. Is other people going to start selling, right? Well, this counteracts that. And then we've got the treasury. The treasury, think of that as like a big marketing pot. Because generally, rebase tokens have a lot of marketing. They're trying to get it out to as many people as they can. They're also doing airdrops. They might go and airdrop Seifu holders. They might go out and airdrop Titana holders. So if all of a sudden you've got this contract in your wallet and you're one of those other holders, it's entirely possible that you've got a small amount just so you can see how it works. You can go use their dashboard. You can check it. You can see the rebases and see the potential of this project. So the treasury is basically that. It's the big marketing fund. It goes into utility development and everything else. A little bit of the fees goes into all these different things. Then you've got the grave or the burn pit. And as you can see, 2% goes into the burn pit for every transaction, which is good. When you've got an inflationary token, you have to have some way to burn it or to make it more deflationary. Because as the supply is increasing, you want to burn some of that supply. And that's what the burn pit essentially does. And then you can see the distribution. And as you can see here, they do have an audit. Now let's keep going down here. A comparison between the different protocols that are out there. Seifu and Titano are the two biggest. So pretty much every project is comparing themselves to those two projects. And as you can see, how they differ. And the real big difference is that referral system that they've got. That's really the big aspect. And that massive APY. That's huge. <laughs> and let's take a look at the milestones. I like this approach. I think this is a great way to do it because they can color things as they go through. Now, again, it hasn't launched yet, so it's not going to have a lot of stuff done. But you can see that they've got some other utilities planned, right? So they've got Ape Blend. Well, I'm not sure what that is. I couldn't find anything about Ape Blend, and I haven't got a response back from the team on what that might be. But they have a plan for more as well. And then they've got an official merch shop. Ape NFT, which we already looked at. And I would actually call the referral kind of like a utility. If you take advantage of that, 1% is a lot. That's a phenomenal utility. And then you get the frequently asked questions here. And then you've got their socials. Now, what don't you see? Well, they're not doxed. That's kind of a big one for me. I generally look for dox teams. But when it comes to rebase tokens, I've become more open-minded to the idea that yes, the US government is probably not gonna be friendly to rebase tokens. I've got a lot of concerns long-term on whether they're gonna be something that the US government allows. And I think a lot of people probably, if you think about it and exactly how rebase tokens work, you're probably gonna to come to the same conclusion is there's probably gonna be some sort of a crackdown on rebase tokens at some point. I would not discount the possibility that that's gonna happen. So yes, the team is not doxxed. Now the app is already up and running. You will need MetaMask in order to use it on your browser. So this is connected through the MetaMask extension that I'm looking at right now. You can also look at it on your DAP inside of Trust Wallet or SafePal. But in order to use it on a browser, you're gonna need to have MetaMask. Now I did talk with the team and they are working on getting Wallet Connect. So if you've got Trust Wallet or if you use a phone-based application, that's coming expected to have it right around the time of actual launch, but it's probably not gonna be up and running before the pre-sale, so just be aware of that. You'll need MetaMask in order to see it on the browser, or you can just use the DAP integration as I mentioned. And as you can see, it's got a lot of the exact same information of other apps that are out there. I like how they got it set up. I like the color scheme. I think it looks really professional, so I think they did a really good job with designing this, but you'll see that all the same information that we normally look for in one of these apps is here to include their burn pit, their insurance fund, everything's all in one easy to use place. Now, for the team, I know you're still building this out, I'd recommend having a disconnect option. It's just a little bit more secure for people that connect there and don't know to clear the cache and disconnect. I always prefer actually manually disconnecting just to ensure that I am disconnected. There might be some sort of a time-based disconnect built into this, 
but I always recommend having the option so that people can manually disconnect. It's a good feature to have in there and it provides an extra sense of security, especially since so many people have lost money because of this connection not being shut down. Now let's go ahead and click on the account. Now again, it's resale. I don't have any. <laughs> it's not gonna have any information on here. But as you can see, it's got a lot of the same information that return on investment, five day. But again, it looks really good. I think they did a really good job designing this. Let's go on to the calculator. Now, sliding bar is always great. I'm assuming we're gonna be able to adjust these. If that's not the case, that would be my recommendation to the team is have the ability to adjust the amount and then also have the ability to adjust the price because I do that all the time on my rebase tokens. Whenever there's a dip, I'm generally jumping into this app and saying, okay, if I buy the dip and I get a few extra whatever token, where's it gonna put me in 30 days or 60 days? What's the return on investment that I can get from that money buying the dip? So hopefully they're gonna incorporate that as well. I think that's a great option for people to be able to forecast and then also kind of plan out their purchases. Now the exciting part, let's go ahead and take a look at referrals. Now, I love the idea of referrals. If I had a referral link and I met the criteria, I could put that in the description of this video. Everybody that clicks on it and decides to buy, maybe I get 1% on all of those referrals. So I love the idea for that. There's actually some other projects out there that are trying to do something very similar just as a service, but this one's built directly in to the token and how this token works, which is great. And you can see it's fairly simple. You know, enjoy passive income by referring new users and spreading the news about the Ape Clock project. Both you and the referee can enjoy fantastic benefits. You will receive 1% of their taxes while they receive a 1% discount on the tax fee. So you want a discount? You want them to have a discount? Seems like a pretty good deal. Here's the caveat. In order to be able to refer to new users, you need to hold at least 0.1% of the total supply or your wallet needs to be approved by the Ape Clock team. So if you're an influencer, and this is the first time you're hearing about this, you might wanna reach out and say, hey, I'm an influencer, can I get this? Might be kinda of nice, right? Now, if you're a whale and you have a lot of influence and you have a lot of people that you know, that might be some benefit as well. Now, 0.1% isn't too crazy at launch. 0.1% six months to a year from now, that could be a lot of money. I think 0.1% for Seifu right now, for example, is a, just under a quarter million dollars. So that would be a lot of tokens and a lot of money in order to qualify for this particular utility. But as far as utility goes, this is phenomenal. And as you can see, I don't meet the required conditions. <laughs> would be nice though, right? And then as you can see here, they've got the buy. That just takes you over to PancakeSwap so you can buy directly on PancakeSwap. I like that they've also got their socials built in here. So if you wanna get the Telegram, Twitter, you can do everything from here. Now, again, they don't have Discord, so there's no link for Discord. I have recommended to the team that they get a Discord server as soon as they can. Hopefully, that'll come out here in the next couple of days. I generally like to go to Discord to find the information because it's just organized a little bit better. All their raids, all their shillings, all their YouTube content, everything that they're doing for pushing this project is all centrally located in one easy-to-use place. That's really the power of Discord. And I spent a lot of time in Discord, but I guess some people like Telegram more than Discord. All right, so let's go take a look at Pink Sale. On Pink Sale, you can see that they're KYC through Pink Sale and they've got an audit. And we'll take a look at the audit here in a few minutes. And as you can see, it's a fair launch. So you're not gonna see a rate. The rate's gonna continue to adjust as people buy into this, but there's no hard and fast rule on what is a good strategy or not. And as you can see, their soft cap is 250 BNB for the pre-sale. And then a lot of the other numbers are down here. You can take a look at the most important one is again, the 24th tomorrow, based on my recording of this video at 12 o'clock UTC is when this thing goes live and it's going to be two days that it's up and running. So you've got two extra days to evaluate. Do you want to get into this or not? And you can also monitor it as well, just to see how everything goes, but you've got two days. So the 26th at 12 UTC is when this thing's going to shut down. 51% of everything they raise is gonna go into the liquidity. And then it unlocks in 365 days. I'm actually okay with that. I know that there's a lot of projects out there that like to go for 
a million years or dozens of years. I actually don't think that's practical because if it's locked, it becomes a real challenge if there's something they need to adjust on the contract. So there's actually a lot of benefit in not doing it that long. Now in 360 days, the team can discuss whether they're going to relock this for X number of years, launch a V2 token, all the things that normally would be discussed when you're coming up on the end of your locking period. But I actually don't have a problem with 365 day lock. Now they do have a team wallet and they're going to be vested. And you can see here that they're released every seven days. So every seven days, they're going to get 10% released to them for other the team wallet. And you can see the breakdown here on the chart. Now for their audit, they were audited by fresh coins. Now I've never actually seen an audit by fresh coins. I don't know much about them, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the audit overview and then we'll jump ahead to the conclusions and analysis. I love it when audits give you a score because you're trusting their understanding of everything that they identified there to give you a numerical score from 100 to failing, right? And a 97 is a phenomenal score. I think most of us in the school would have said, awesome, at a 97%. That's a phenomenal score. And I'm trusting that their understanding of the contract and what are the potential issues gives them a 97% score. So I have a lot of trust and confidence that the contract shouldn't have any issues when I see a high score like that. But let's keep going down here. Zero high, zero medium, zero low, zero optimizations, and zero informational. It's kind of hard to beat that. <laughs> now, again, this is a Seifu fork you kind of expect that, right? Because there are a lot of contracts out there that have come off of the Seifu fork. It should be pretty stable at this point. At this point, all we're shifting is APYs and adjusting certain numbers. You would expect at this point that most of the bugs have been worked out and resolved. And as you can see, all passes. Now, smart contract within the scope were manually reviewed and analyzed with static tools, auto report overview, and contains all found security vulnerabilities and other issues, which there weren't any, found no issues during the first review. Kind of hard to beat that. And then you can see their buy and sell fees, 10% and 12%. There is nothing wrong with owned. They do have the blacklist option, which most contracts these days do have that. But a good audit. I think they did really well. And I like that it's been audited before launch. There are a lot of tokens that don't do this step and they have a lot of problems on launch. Usually there's some sort of an attack on their contract. We shouldn't have to worry about that. Not to say that there won't be some kind of an attack on liquidity or something else, but this gives me a lot of confidence in this contract not to have issues. That's pretty much it for today's content. Hopefully you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments. What did you think about Ape Clock? What are your concerns? What are your thoughts? Is it something you're considering investing in? I'm curious to hear your thoughts about Ape Clock. I really love the APY and I love that they integrated referrals directly in. So that's kind of their first utility and it's going to be launching on day one, which is pretty cool. And the idea that you could get 1% back for the people that you refer, plus they get a 1% discount, it's kind of nice. If you miss out on the presale, you might want to look for somebody that's got a referral link just to save yourself some money to get in after the presale. Seems like a good strategy. I don't know about you, but that makes sense to me. <laughs> and if I end up getting a referral link, I will put that on these videos. But right now I don't. And maybe I should ask if I could get one as well. <laughs> so what are the things I really like? I like that they've got a utility on launch. I like that they've got a plan for utility long term. Those are phenomenal. A lot of projects don't necessarily launch with utility. They kind of see how everything goes and then they decide what utility they can afford to get into. This one's already got one. That's a great starting point. I like that they got the audit done. That's phenomenal. It gives me a lot of confidence that the, at least the contract is safe. A lot of times contracts get attacked and they fail on launch and then they end up to do a relaunch or the team just gives up on it. So a lot of things can happen if you don't have that audit. This team went the extra mile to do that. Now keep in mind, those things cost money. It's not cheap. KYC processes cost money. Audits cost money. So they're putting their own money into this before they have any. They didn't do a private sale that I'm aware of. So they're putting their own money into it. That's why sometimes it's not possible to do Certic audits, which cost $25,000 to do on launch, or the RugDoc KYC process that 
cost quite a bit of money. Also, I think it's like 10,000 maybe. I don't know the exact number for that, but these things aren't cheap. So they can only do as much as they've got money to do. They'll have more money after launch, as soon as the treasury starts to build up, to put into marketing and other things for this to include utility. So I think they did a really good job trying to at least provide a sense of security that this project is going to be around for a while. They put some thought into the utility. They've got utility included, which probably wasn't cheap all on its own. And they did the audit. Now, I do wish that the team would dox themselves, but that's actually very common these days. I'm kind of hoping by 2023 that won't be an issue. But there's a couple other projects I've covered on this channel that had very legitimate concerns, especially when you're talking about rebase tokens. Rebase tokens are fairly new. There is no way to determine what's going to happen with rebase tokens. Is the SEC going to say, no, you can't do that? Is some other aspect of the United States government going to say, what do you mean rebasing every 15 minutes or every minute or every 30 minutes? What is a rebase? No, you can't do that. Tell me that that's not a possibility. And if they know who created the project, could they shut it down? If they don't know who created the project, it's a lot harder to shut it down. <laughs> At least that's kind of the theory I heard from another project. So I understand why a lot of projects don't necessarily want to dox themselves, especially on rebases. What I would recommend is if you're not going to dox yourself, that you get a higher quality KYC process through something like the rug doc once you've got the money and the budget to do that. That would be my recommendation to mitigate some of the concerns that investors are going to have because a lot of investors won't even touch a project that is in docs. They're more willing to get into a project that has a more robust KYC process. That way, if something does happen, rug doc, for example, releases that information. They're, they have no problem. That's part of the contract with them. They will release the information. That's why they've only had one project, rug pull. They've got a pretty good stats for avoiding rug pulls through the KYC process. So that will be my recommendation to the team just to try to improve some of the security. Now, they also don't have multi-sig wallets. That's always going to be my recommendation for any kind of a team. Try to use multi-sig wallets as much as possible. You never know as a project builds that you can trust everybody that you're going to add to your team. Let's say this project shoots up and takes off like Seifu did. You might have a pretty good sized team. Maybe they have access to the treasury. Maybe they have access to a different team wallet. Maybe they have access to other aspects of the project as you go forward. Multi-sig wallets help prevent unauthorized pulling out of that money. It's just an extra added layer of security to prevent what might look like a rug pull. If all of a sudden somebody on the team has access to the wallet and pulls all the funds out, it's going to look a lot like a rug pull, even though maybe it was just a bad actor that withdraw all the funds, it's not going to go well. And I've seen that happen to teams. So it's not like it's outside the realm of possibility. Multi-sig wallets help avoid some of that. So that would be a recommendation I've got for the team as well. As always, do your own research. I provided quite a lot of information in this. Always go do your own research. There's still more things that you can look at when researching these projects before investing and never invest money you aren't willing to lose. It's always a possibility, especially during pre-sales. Until next time, stay strong with those diamond hands.